Well, happy Halloween and welcome to this Saturday edition of the Datecast. Uh, it's October 31st, and tonight, my friends, is the time change. Tonight, we gain an hour. Although a friend of mine told me yesterday that gaining an hour this year in 2020 was like getting a bonus track on a Yoko Ono album. I thought that was pretty funny. You know, but the truth is, 2020 has not been the best of years, has it? And let's be honest, I mean, it's likely to get worse this next week as, as things could get pretty tense. So we need to remember our hope is found in Jesus. And I think in these days, more than ever maybe, we need to be looking for and acting on tangible ways that we can make a difference in the world, that we can bring the kingdom of God to earth. And honestly, that's really what these Saturday Davecasts are about as I've been interviewing folks and spotlighting some ministries that are just awesome examples of faith and action. And today's episode is an extraordinary example of that in the two guests that I'm going to be interviewing. Um, first of all is Tony Kelichek, who is a member of Conyers First and one of my heroes. You know, whether it is working with, with homeless people here in our community or, or the work she does in Haiti, Tony is one of the most courageous and fearless people I've ever known. And today we're going to be uh, talking about Haiti and how we can make a difference right now, today, this weekend with the project there uh, that God has opened up for us. And so I'll be talking first with Tony and immediately after we'll watch a conversation that uh, Tony and I had with her friend Nelson, who is Haitian and at work on the ground there in mission and ministry among some of the least of these in Haiti. And so let's watch these interviews and I'll be back at the end with a closing word. All right. So uh, welcome, Tony Kelichek. And Tony has been uh, quarantined for the coronavirus the past couple of weeks, but you're feeling better? Yeah, I'm doing much better. Yeah. And Miles, I, I will, yeah. It's a case, so. Yeah. Well, um, so uh, we're talking about Haiti today, and in a, in a little bit we're going to meet, meet a friend of yours from Haiti. Uh, but I wanted to kind of introduce it because this has been a ministry of yours. In fact, I remember before I came to Conyers, I got an email from you talking about Haiti. So you've had a heart for Haiti for a long, long time. How, how did that happen? How did that evolve? Um, well, you know, Jordan and I would go to Honduras every year with the church. And right. uh, some friends of ours from another church invited us to go to Haiti once. Mm -hmm. And um, we went and it wrecked us. We, we were like, oh my gosh, you know, as a matter of fact, Jordan got on the uh, computer when we got home to find out when we could go again, how soon, and we ended up going three months later, just she and I together. Right. Um, and we've been seven times since then, so right. um, it just really got in our heart, uh, the people of Haiti, and um, it just kind of evolved over time. We made a lot of contacts down there and would work with different people when we'd go. Um, I met Nelson about five years ago um, when I, Wendy and I actually went after a hurricane, uh, we went and we went up to the uh, area of Pastel and we were introduced to Nelson through a, a friend and he became an interpreter for us and showed us around um, all the damage that was done and took us to people's houses. And he was, I, I could just tell he really had a heart for the people and he was young. He was like 21 then, he's 26 as of yesterday. And, um, but he really had a heart for people and he showed us around. So ever since then, I've always tried to get up to the Pastel area. Uh, but even if I don't, he would make his way down to Port-au-Prince to work with me as an interpreter in the city as well. So um, he, he recently, you know, contacted me about needing some help for people in his area. Mm -hmm. And he's working uh, particularly with some orphans that, uh that became orphans through Hurricane Matthew, which is kind of the hurricane you were, um, that you were referring to. And that, that just really devastated uh, Haiti, I know, when Matthew came through. It did. We were, we were in such shock at how bad it was. Um, we had been to the, the area once before the hurricane, and when we went after the hurricane, it was hardly recognizable. The, the forests were gone. It, you could see houses we had no idea were there before that had been hidden. 
um, and many people were living in, it looked like dog houses. It looked like these little small makeshift houses. And we were told that that's what people were living in as their temporary homes because their homes were gone. And um, so these children were either being raised by their parents or grandparents and um, they ended up losing their parents during the storm. And so they've kind of gone around to different families taking care of them. But of course, they are the less of these, so they did not always get enough food. And so when he contacted me a few months ago, he said there were 10 kids that were really sick, had fevers, he was really worried about him. And so we hired a friend of his who's a nurse to come and take their vitals or temperature, kind of give us an assessment of what's going on. And she said it was malnourishment, that they were extremely malnourished and needed real food. Mm -hmm. So I just put a word out that I needed help. And I had uh, quite a few friends step forward and offer money. And we started feeding them three times a day, uh, at least five days a week. And we have the nurse came back out about three weeks afterwards we started. And she, you know, they were better. Um, and so it, it just kind of progressed from there. Mm -hmm. Tell about the garden that, uh, the community garden that you helped get start, started there. Well, after we'd been feeding the kids for several months, you know, I told Nelson, I said, I want to help you, but I don't know that I could sustain this, you know, uh, amount of feeding. So let's look at some solutions that are more permanent that the people can be involved in and, you know, give them dignity as well. So I asked him about a garden and <laughs> Nelson's amazing. He found this guy from UNICEF that has done gardens before, um, a Haitian man, and he's worked with them and he's put gardens together. So he was our consultant and uh, he found us a good piece of land that we paid rent for for two and a half years. And the people, the families, it's about 10 or 12 different families that um, all agreed to go out. The men cleared the land, the women helped, um, and then they planted beans, corn, pistache. And Nelson also bought some little chicks um, that they're raising uh, for both eggs and for food. So we kind of started this little community project and they were so excited about it. Um, I had several video calls with Nelson and the, the group and um, you know they were all very excited and they said that uh, we brought hope. Mm -hmm. Cool. So what is pistache? Um, I'm thinking that he's, it's like pistachio. That's what I thought, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They toss it pistache and they, they'll, crunk, you know, squish it up and make peanut butter out of it for the kids because they love peanut butter in Haiti. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they make different foods with it, but they call it pistache. Yeah. And so um, we're going to get to how people uh, can help contribute to that food project. Um, and we'll put that in the notes and I'll ask you about that in a second. But uh, we kind of got involved uh, sort of in, a, I don't know, even serendipitous way, but we started the family service because with those kids, he wanted to watch the service and he would interpret. And that's a big deal for them. So tell, tell a bit about that. Well, he told me that um, he would really love to see our church service um, because the kids you know, wanted to know more about Jesus and the Bibles. And, and I asked him, did they have Bibles? And he said, no. And they weren't going to church because they didn't have proper clothes. In Haiti, it's a cultural thing. You, you need the proper clothes to go to church. So we rounded up a little bit more money. We bought all the kids' uh, Bibles, their New Testament Bibles and Haitian Creole. And then we um, got them shirts so they could go to church. But uh, church there is very kind of limited and it's mostly men talking to the adults and so when he found out we were having a family service he was very interested in letting the kids watch that so he tuned in on our first family service and um, he said the kids had a blast the only problem was he's using his cell phone which is very small and what started out as 10 kids ended up being 30 kids. And then now there's adults wanting to watch and some of the pastors are wanting to watch. So it's like, 
he called me, he goes, I need something bigger. I've got to have something bigger so more people can see. And he's interested in, you know, Bible study, doing Bible study with us or um, your Dave cast, you know, they're hungry for the word. Um, they're in an area that doesn't get visited by missionaries very often at all. And if they do, it's mainly a food effort because of the starvation in the mountains. So I was really um, pleased that he was really hoping to bring more uh, Bible study and, and more understanding about Jesus to his area. Yeah. And so just to get right down to the, to the ask and really my purpose and why I was excited about talking to you today is, you know, we, we look for uh, sustainable ongoing needs, and you're doing that with the food project and stuff, and of course there's some immediate needs there to contribute to, but it's really a very doable thing to get them a big screen TV down there so that they can watch uh, our services, you know, Bible studies, and uh, and just that that will be a draw and a ministry to them, and so um, you started with a little fundraising, and we're, I think we're going to finish it up through this today. So uh, tell us what's involved with that and how people can give. Okay, well, as far as for the, uh, what we've come up with is a, he's trying to get a 36-inch TV so mm -hmm. that he's got a much bigger screen that he can uh, show the videos on. And in Haiti, where he is, they need solar panels, batteries, uh, a router to go with it. So the combination of all of that is about $1,500. And um, it's it's higher price than what it probably would have been because their economy is tanked right now and the US dollar is really low over there. So um, everything costs more. Mm -hmm. So we figured about $1,500 when he priced everything out to get them set up where they can share uh, you know, more biblical stuff. And then as far as feeding the kids go, um, we, we've got the garden paid for. So we're just waiting on uh, crops to be ready for harvest. So that's good. And that's ongoing. That's paid for. But the, the 10 kids that we're trying to continue to feed and take care of, um, I've been trying to send him about 200 to 220 a week um, mm -hmm. for them. And um, there's a couple of ladies that we hire to, to cook the food. So that's part of the money. Um, Nelson has to go to a whole nother city to buy the food. So that's a little bit of the money. So the whole cost is around 220. And um, I'm kind of running out of funds for that. And I've told him, and of course he's so grateful. He's like, well, we'll have a party. We'll just take the last bit of the money and have a party and tell him that's the end of it. And I was like, well, We'll see what we can do. You know, we'll try to, you know, I might not be able to give them as many meals per day. Maybe we can feed them once a day or twice a day. But um, if I can get some funds to continue the feeding, that would be awesome to help these kids. And, you know, and then, of course, feeding them spiritually is even more important. Uh, we want them to know Christ. And Nelson was telling us today, he, he needs to raise up some young leaders to take over when he's not around. Um, He's, uh, he's a really special kid. He's got a heart condition. He actually came to the U.S. when he was a small child. An American doctor took him back, did a heart operation on him. And so he lives in Haiti with a very serious heart condition. And um, I worry about him all the time because just any kind of accident can cause him to bleed out. And, but he's so, he, he will do anything for these kids. He, you know, rides motorcycles, which is dangerous for him. And to get where he's going, to get the food they need. He was going to take three of them on a motorcycle to a hospital one time. And I was like, let's don't do that. Let's bring the nurse to them. Yeah. So, um, you know, he's just a great kid and has a great heart. Well, awesome. Well, um, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, show that video now in just a second. Great. All right. All right. Tony, thank you so much. Love you. Sure. Love you. Yeah. Here we are, Nelson. Welcome to, uh, to the Dave cast uh, and Tony. Good to see you as well. Yes. How, thank you for setting this up. We are, uh, we're talking with uh, Nelson. Nelson, t pronounce your last name for me. What's your last name, Nelson? Petitfer. Petitfer. I can't say it very well. Petitfer. 
Yeah, P E T I T F R E R E. Yeah. Nelson, you have a ministry. Uh, we've been working with uh, uh, some orphans down there uh, in in Haiti. Tell us, tell tell us about your ministry in, down there. What do you? Yeah, you do some interpretation, but what else? Um, we work with uh, the church. We work with uh, you know, some kids who has no parents. Um, we have not. We don't have really ministry, but we. Um, I work by myself and um, sometimes, and I found support with Tony's friend. Um, Tony is a is a head. He always be there to try to find some help with uh, for 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 us, and we help kids um, to go to go to school, and we help kids to give them food because they have no mother, no no father. And after um, Hurricane Matthew, and we have they they go to church as well, and that's why I, I do. Yeah. Well, we um we became you know Tony's been working with you, but we have recently uh, began having a ministry with each other uh, with uh, streaming what we were doing when our family service. Uh, and just uh, I understand that, like you had all these kids trying to gather around your face, your uh, your cell phone to watch the service. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's too little because um, they want. You know, it's too many because my cell phone is crazy it's too little. You know, and the other church wants to come in too because it's the first time they ever had it. You know. They never watching this. Um, uh, you know, they never watch watching this this before. So they want to come in and see um, this uh, um, opportunity. They want to watching this service for the first time. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> where I am now is uh, you know it's a different. This is very different with you guys and because I know there before. This is very different with you. And what do we get here? Because um, the pastors here not really knows a lot of things about Jesus. You know, when kids um, try to learn something different from another country, it's a big, it's a very big difference. It's a very big level for us. And that's why, this is the reason why they want to watch us every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um this is what I told Tony if he can ask if she can ask him for a screen and battery solar panel we can have electricity to, and church and to open the tele the screen uh, all the kids even the people can watching the activity even church too and sometimes we can have um, um, conference online mm -hmm. they can we can teach us about Jesus more than they, they don't know. So this is why, you know, so the, there are a little more limited because there's not that many people that come there to teach them. Right. So you, you oh, that, yeah. uh, even the pastors and the elders want to come and learn more. Yes. Yeah. This is even this is why too, sister Diane always, uh, you know, Diane, she's always um, did a conference in Haiti um, training. Yeah. Pastor training in Haiti. Pastor training. And uh, yeah, that's yeah. something we've been wanting to do for the last couple of years. But with the, the violence, it's been really hard to get there because I know in your area, it's not bad. But going into Port-au-Prince is the problem. And traveling from there to your area has prevented me from going and and Diane as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My area is very um, is limited about the violence, but... This will be good. Now we can have face time, and then you can instate, and you can we can teach us online. Even they can unite it at the church at the same time. So I can be there and translate, and you and state like as we doing now, and study together with them. You know, I, we have a, a a church for missions. We have a church that um, is also willing to take risk. And so, I mean, the primary thing, primary thing I'm trying to do this weekend, and I don't think it's going to be in 
of much of an issue is is to raise money uh, to get you the equipment that you need. Uh, and so we'll be in touch a lot and try to get the resources to you that you need uh, as we you know try to move forward uh, in spreading the gospel of Jesus and the kingdom of God uh, all over the world. Well, God, God bless you. Yes. God, God bless you, Nelson. And we'll, we will talk again soon. And uh, I appreciate your, your time with us this morning. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you also. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Yeah. I'll talk to you. God bless you, Sonny. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Hmm. We love you. I'm including a link in the notes of this episode about how you can help with this project in Haiti. And I'll also be sharing uh, some more information tomorrow during our worship service at Conyers First. Uh, that service is at 11 a.m. tomorrow, which you can attend in person wearing masks and adhering to all the social distancing protocols. Or if you choose, you can watch online through Facebook or our church website or even listen on the phone through our telephone streaming service. Um, tomorrow is All Saints, and we will be remembering the 14 saints from Conyers First that passed away this year. I mean, many during a time when there really couldn't be a funeral, or maybe it was just a small family-only funeral. And so this All Saints is especially important in that it gives us a chance as a congregation to grieve and honor and give God thanks for these folks that deeply touched our lives and our church's lives. And so um, I'll be back next week on the Dave Cast as I continue uh, the teaching series on the letter of James. But until next time, you all be safe and keep bringing the hope.